And so whenever good things happen, uh, the people in the Bible, they would blow the rams horn just as an announcement of all the good things that are, that are going on. So I thought we would try maybe to blow into this cornucopia and see if can we get any noise out of you. want to try to blow in there and make a noise? All right.
you need something to write with, if you need something to write with, there's some uh, pens and pencils and markers right there. Okay? Happy Thanksgiving to all of you. You already wrote one? All that's right now. So maybe you just want to hand some of the people that are All right. You know what? It might be helpful if you're thankful for something. Why don't you raise your hand and then they'll know who to give the leads to. Could you just raise your hand if you're thankful for something and you want to show your thanks this morning? That would be helpful for our group.
with what we have or what we are or even who we are. So even a day such as Thanksgiving whose reason for existing really is just a time to do what? Thanksgiving is for giving thanks. We as a society have kind of turned that around, haven't we? And we make it more about maybe Black Friday, which causes a little anxiety or angst among us as well. I think uh, that our society and our culture and all those pressures to be and to have and to do can lead us away from what truly matters in life. So Paul offers a radical alternative, the act of giving thanks for who we are and what we have right now is radical, it is counter-cultural, it goes against society and the things that Black Friday brings to us. Paul tells us that to contemplate our current condition with eyes that have been sharpened by gratitude and thanksgiving. And that is the only way, even when we live in a great time of anxiety or our age, that is the only way for us to receive true peace, just as Paul received this peace in his prison cell. So Paul says whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worth of praise, then think about these things. Now you and I thought the narrative of our lives was just about our hard work or how much we have to do or how much we still have to get in this life. And it doesn't matter if the currency you value is money or relationships or achievements. Once you start thinking about needing more, the narrative always reduces our familiar little lives with complaints, right? We, we enter into a life of Complaining about how much we have to do. Complaining about how little we have in, in life. Well, Christ the King enters that narrative of our lives, even when it's filled with complaints, and He offers us something more. He offers the knowledge of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. The one God of heaven and earth gave you everything, everything that you really cherish, even the things that you don't really think that are part of your religion or part of your faith life. Best of all, God gave you himself in Jesus Christ who forgives your sins and forgives you from all of your crippling guilt that seems to be part of your lives. And he gives you an open future filled with hope. In other words, God in Jesus Christ has already given you everything that God has. God has given you 100%. And what a wonderful exercise, not just on Thanksgiving, but what a wonderful exercise to think about all of the things that God in Christ Jesus has given you. And I just wanted to do that with respect to our lives right here at our church. So let's do it right now. Let's embark in this practice, this radical and countercultural course of giving thanks. So let me just name a few things that I have experienced as your pastor, things that ring true for me as I contemplate the Apostle Paul's advice for us to think about these things. You know, every Sunday that I've been here, someone has volunteered to act as our lector, to, to come up front and help us in our worship time. To, to read the lessons, sharing leadership for our time of worship, and that's a good thing. And we have great music that God has blessed and inspired our musicians. So we have we have Mr. Laney, we have Chris Laney, Sunday after Sunday, who's been blessed and inspired by God. And ought we not think of these things? We have our music leaders. Every once in a while, our choir shows up and fills us with the gift of God's music that God and the Holy Spirit have inspired them to do. We should think about these things. We have uh, many people in our uh, midst that come on Saturdays and they prepare the sanctuary for worship. We have our altar guild who 
We have those that care for our flowers. We have our ushers that help us on Sunday morning. We have our greeters that treat us part, just like we're family as we come into worship, right? We have ushers that help us and assist us and, and bring our offerings and present them to God uh, with honor. We have all of these things that we should be thinking about. So whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And I've noticed the church's generous use of its building for various members of this community. Opening our doors to the community is ministry, and it is evangelism. And we are all part of the vital work, not just what goes on in this building, but the whole community is part of the vital work of God's work in the world. And so we lift that up, and there are many members of our congregation that have been or currently are battling some very grave challenges to their health. And some of our members are generally well, but they're homebound. And so they can't get out of their, their homes. Some of our members have traveled through the very dark times of grief and despair as they have had to lay to rest loved ones that they've lost. And, and as I would visit each person, whether in, in their homes or in the hospital, I inevitably meet members of this congregation who are either going in or coming out of the hospital rooms or their homes. And oftentimes they're bringing gifts with them. They're bringing a card. They're bringing a plate of cookies or they're bringing, you know, a hot dish to them. And so you are part of this very vital ministry of caring and loving each other in the name of this congregation. This caring ministry of visitation is something that is true and honorable and excellent. Excellent. And if there's anything worthy of our praise, then we think about these things today, don't we? We think about these things and we're filled with these things. And you know, we would hardly be able to consider ourselves a Lutheran church if we didn't have boards and committees. And my, oh my, do we have a lot of boards and committees and we have meetings that are going on all of the time here in this building. Congregational members and uh, our rooms and, and the library downstairs, they're filled with the voices of individuals and congregational members doing the work of the church. The unglamorous stuff, the number crunching, the contacting contractors to, to do the most recent thing that needs to be done on our building, and planning for the details of things like rally day, or could you smell anything today when you came into church? How about the preparations that go into our community Thanksgiving meal? All of those things that go on behind the scenes, things that most of you don't even see. We give thanks for all of these. And, and then how about our kids that are here, our youth that, that you bring to learn about the faith. All of these things that are commendable and true and just and honorable. We think about these things, and they are worthy of our praise. And there's so much more. We have quilts in front of us today that the women have quilted together throughout the year. And you know that they quilt over a hundred of these blankets every year. I mean, if we were to fill our sanctuary with all of their work, that would be very impressive. But what if we filled our sanctuary with all of the things that represent the work that we do here at Grace Luther? I mean, it would, it would certainly it would be like a cornucopia full of all the good things, right, in, in our lives. You know, together we are able to do in ministry what none of us can do alone. Together we can do in service what none of us can do alone. And I know that so much more goes on in each of your homes, things that are true and honorable, just and pure and pleasing and commendable. So many actions, small and large, that speak of kindness and good-heartedness, things most excellent and worthy of praise. The gathered meals around the table, a table that's quickly transformed just as the, the food is taken off into a study table where, where homework is brought on that table in the dining room or the kitchen 
or maybe Legos are being played with on that table, or maybe coloring books come out and markers and crayons, and that table is just full of items. These two are true and honorable and things worthy to be lifted up. And I think about pictures that adorn the refrigerator and the quick meals of breakfast or a sandwich as you and your family are, are rushed out the door and you might leave the refrigerator door open or certainly the milk on the counter and dishes in the sink because you're, you're so quick to get to the next activity in your life. And, and maybe it's just simple things like making flatbread or sitting down and having dinner with close friends or bedtime stories, or, or maybe bedtime prayers with your child, just a moment of quietness, or maybe a time when you get to snuggle with each other on the couch and watch a movie, or, or just to have some quiet time. These are all good things, right, that we lift up today, blessings given to us to see and to enjoy. Thanksgiving is for giving thanks for all of these things. Because together we can share in love that none of us can manage alone. None of us. And so we fill ourselves with what is true and honorable and just. And what is more pure or pleasing or commendable than this. So let's contemplate these things so that we can recognize the simple truth of the Apostle Paul and the peace that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our